It's a young samurai, I smoke a split in a cut, then I pass a lot to my bro. No fuck with my flow. Couple bad bitches in a cup of that show. So it's just THC. Hey yo, I appreciate it if you could hit that like button right about now. What's up, party people? BBN, Jack Force. Hey yo, before we even start, hit that like button. And if you don't mind, subscribe and also join the notification gang. Hashtag Brown Phones. Let's get it. Alright, so this is a new segment I'm starting. It's called the Jack Force Show. Basically, I'm going to try to make it a daily show where I just talk about stuff in the news that interests me daily and as usual well as starting now uh whatever i talk about first it's probably going to be like the big topic that's on my mind for the day and um <laughs> right now meek mills hit it he hit it out the box um i think that meek mill wouldn't have all these problems and issues that he have if he just all this other stuff wasn't going on with homeboy like right now so much other stuff is going on with meek mills right now that anytime he say or do anything people is just jumping out the window I don't think that Trick Daddy should have just went as hard as he went. Like, you know, he's kind of making himself look bad in my opinion. It's just my opinion. I could be wrong. But I think that, you know, there was really no need for him to go as hard as he went. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, we know, we know he doesn't, him being Meek Mills, know more about yachts and motorboats or whatever the hell on the water than people in Miami. He from Philly. People in Miami know much more about any type of water activity, lounging on the water in some kind of vehicle. We already know that. You know what I'm saying? I don't think uh, he should have jumped out the water the way he did. I do think that if he wanted to address it, he should have addressed it a little bit differently, like, you know, like letting them know, like, you know, you're kind of playing yourself right now, homeboy. You gotta be a little bit more specific. You know, he could have did that. But let's just keep it a buck. Right now, Meek is all over the Instagrams or Snapchats or whatever the hell. And he's putting up tons of, you know, different social media about these things and what he's doing. And it, it just seemed to me like Meek Mills was just trying to say that as far as the the uh, hip-hop artists that are coming up under him or coming up, you know, uh, behind him or with him, well, more behind him than with him, that this is something that he's kind of pioneering. Like, they're seeing what he's doing. Like with the with the with the with the chains with the diamond chains and all that, they seeing what he's doing and they kind of vibing on it and they feeling it and so they kind of doing the same thing. So that's kind of what's going on with that right there. And I think that uh, I just think that Trick Daddy took it the wrong way. And but at the same time, you know, I or you also got to look like look at it like this. And I think Trick Daddy's a real dude. I'm not trying to uh, you know be disrespectful or anything like that to him. But you also got to think about it like this. You have a lot of people. You have some people who who's not even hip-hop artists that's coming out and doing a lot of talking and, and it's building a name up. You know, like a Wack 100. He's not even an artist. He's doing a lot of talking here and there, talking crazy, and it's building his name up. And you got somebody like Trick Daddy who, you know, just because of the nature of, of his area and how they get down, they just not really, you know, look at me, look at me type dudes. So because of that, maybe he's not getting some of the pub he deserves. Maybe Trick Daddy should be able to get uh, the type of, should have the type of publicity already where he could still show up and do some of his music in, in clubs. And then, you know, he I, he shouldn't be able to headline at this point, I wouldn't think. But there's lots of hip-hop artists that go out now and they, uh you know, old school and they get together and they do shows. And there's no reason why I don't see Trick Daddy can't do that, right? I think he's, he, had, he, had some, he had a couple hits, he had a couple bangers. I think Trick Daddy, I think, not for nothing, but I think if, if you play a couple of the Trick Daddy's, like, bangers right now in the clubs, and his bangers in the club right now, the people that never heard it before will be vibing. Like, I really think that people never heard these songs before will be vibing. You know? I mean, you can say that about a lot of artists, not for nothing, but with some of the Trick Daddy stuff, definitely, without a shadow of a doubt, like, it's gonna hit. It's gonna hit hard. Hey, yo, I appreciate it if you could hit that like button right about now and with that said i want to talk about game of thrones anybody watch game of thrones all day game of thrones um i didn't cover uh season i didn't cover episode one at all what i will be doing is uh starting next week episode three and further i will be doing an episode breakdown of everything i might drop an episode two breakdown also 
Um, but I'm going to be doing an episode three breakdown. Absolutely. I might be doing an episode two breakdown. I was watching somebody else's channel and they was talking about, um, I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but they was bringing up the part where they were talking about the Prince the Bee. And, um, they were like, well, the Prince the Bee. And then the other lady, I forgot her name. She said, well, you know, that particular word doesn't have, it doesn't have a sex to it. It, it could be a gender part of me. It doesn't have a gender, uh, uh, you know, um, attached to it. It could either be a male or female. So basically it's saying prince or princess. And I thought that was kind of a lazy way to, um, what an individual also said the same thing that I was thinking. And what I, I initially thought that it was kind of a lazy way for the writers to kind of say that, you know, um, it could be Daenerys. It's Daenerys Starborn. The God of Light is waiting for. But I think more, I think they're just trying to, uh, kind of lead us. They trying, they, they trying to just kind of lead us to think things that's not really happening because I think that the person that they're really waiting for is Jon Snow. I think Jon Snow is the prince that the the God of Light or whatever the Lord of Light is waiting for or he spoke of. And I think I think it's Jon Snow. I don't think it's Daenerys Stormborn. But I do think and you heard it here first. I don't know if you heard it here first. Somebody else could have said it, but I'm gonna say you heard it here first. You heard it here first. Daenerys Stormborn and Jon Snow are gonna get married. It's gonna be love at first sight. They're going to freaking, it's going to be one of those high tent situations. They're just going to almost immediately fall for each other. They're going to keep their guards up, but they're going to almost immediately fall for each other. You heard it here first. It's going to, it's going to kind of, kind of be on the back burner. But then when they, when they finally do it, to get exposed for what it is. It's going to be so obvious. Right now, I'm telling you, Jon Snow, Daenerys Stormborn, they're going to be together. That's that. Hey, yo, I appreciate it if you could hit that like button. Right about now. Also, in sports, we have, they got Kyrie Irving. So Kyrie, this is, it's a shame. This is how you know that the NBA is just really messed up right now. The NBA is just really messed up. They just messed up all the way across the board when the freaking offseason is better than the actual season and better than the actual playoffs and better than the actual finals. It just doesn't make sense. The offseason is better than everything that better than the actual game. So now, and you got to think about this. Just think about this. So we have Kyrie Irving. He is saying he does not want to be a Cleveland Cavalier no more. He wants to get traded. Before we get any further into that, why does he want to get traded? Because he knows that LeBron isn't coming back. Let's slow down for one second before we get into the Kyrie thing. How do we know LeBron isn't coming back? LeBron said he is not waiving his no trade clause. So that means that next year, he becomes an unrestricted free agent. That means that he's going to make sure that not only does he leave, but also the Cleveland Cavaliers isn't going to be able to get anything in return because he's not allowing them to trade him. And he's going to be an unrestricted free agent. So after he leaves, that means that Cleveland Cavaliers also won't be getting any compensation for him. <laughs> okay, the way this works is like this. I know this is the way it works in football. <laughs> you hear about this more football than in actual basketball. That's the problem. Uh, the end of a guy contract comes up. He's a restricted free agent. That means that in football and in baseball, I also believe that means that if the guy decides to go for somebody else, you can match the offer sheet. I could be wrong on this. If I'm wrong on this, please leave it down in the comments. You can, latch the, you can match the offer sheet. If you match the offer sheet, you get to keep the dude. That makes it so people can't just leave the team and go play for somebody else for the money that you would have gave them in the first place because that messes the league up. Like, you you play, you, you freaking on Washington. Let's say you um, um, a Washington a Washington National and you decide you don't want to be a Washington National no more. You want to be a New York Yankee. So you go to the Yankees, right? So the Yankees, they sign you or they give you an offer sheet for whatever, you know, X amount of dollars. But the Washington Nationals is like, you know what? We're not letting you go. We're going to match that offer. And they match whatever the offer is that the Yankees was going to give. That means that you have to go back to the Nationals, period. That's what that is. Also, in addition, in football, if you're a restricted free agent and somebody else signs you, they have to give back compensation. You understand what I'm saying? So it's a big deal to be an unrestricted free agent. I mean, you could do whatever you want to do. You're in charge of your own destiny. So... Well, he want to be LeBron James. He wants to be an unrestricted free agent, which he will be after this season. Now, at the end of the last season, I said this in a couple of videos in which I did. I said at the end of the year, LeBron is not coming back. He does not want to play for the Cleveland Cavaliers. I made this known. I said this. I said it two or three different times. I also said 
Way before Kyrie asked for a trade, that Kyrie should want to ask for a trade because they're disrespecting him. They keep putting him on the trading block over and over and over again. And he played outstanding basketball in every final he's been in. In every finals that Kyrie has been in, he's played outstanding. Kyrie's a baller. So, I was basically saying, he should want to leave. What the hell I want to stay here with y'all dudes for? So, now basically what's happening is... You got to understand, people know what's going on. People that play in the league, they already know what's going on. People don't want to play with LeBron. They don't. The older players in the league, they don't want to necessarily play with LeBron anymore. There was a time when playing with LeBron was the thing. You know LeBron is going to the finals, because let's keep it a buck. I don't want to... I don't want to question the NBA's... way of doing things. But we know LeBron is going to go to the finals if he has a halfway decent team. No, I'm not going to say he's going to get all the calls. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that the other team is just going to get bad calls in the, in the playoffs. I'm not just saying I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is he just consistently goes to the finals. No matter what his team is and no matter what the other team is, he just goes to the finals. So, okay, with that being said, so Kyrie Irving, knowing all of this, has decided that he does not want to play with LeBron any further. Okay, Let's go back and just go through one more thing before we get to the big point, which will incorporate Carmelo Anthony. So, one last thing. Kyrie Irving, I mean, pardon me, LeBron James. Wait, what's the last point? Let me make sure. Let me get it. Also, before I get to the big point, which will incorporate Carmelo Anthony, Kyrie Irving, LeBron James, everybody that works for that organization knows that they're not going to catch up to the Golden State Warriors. The reason being is, let's say they trade a player to get better, right? Well, the player they trade to get another guy, that's not going to necessarily make them better. They're as good as they're going to get with what they do. They're as good as they're going to get. So they trade a player to get another. Who are you going to trade? You trade a player to get another player, you'll be just as good, just a different good. You see, what Golden State did was they already had a championship caliber team. And then, because dude became an unrestricted free agent, he went to, the he, um, dude being Durant, Durant came and uneven the playing field even more than it already was. Nobody's going to catch up to these guys. LeBron knows this. So LeBron is going to make sure that he becomes an unrestricted, unrestricted free agent so he could then go do exactly what Durant did. You heard it here first. Okay, so now. LeBron, there's a reason why Carmelo Anthony, remember Carmelo Anthony? That's what I initially was talking about, Carmelo and Kyrie. Mama Carmelo Anthony said that he did not want to go, that he was only going to waive his no trade to go to, initially, the Clippers, Houston, and the Cavaliers. The Clippers lost um, Chris Paul. The Cavaliers, I know, he thought I was going to use the other finger. The Cavaliers, <laughs> the Cavaliers, oh, pardon me, not the Cavaliers, yeah, the Cavaliers, are now in the position that they're in. So that's why he's saying he only wants to go to Houston. That's why Houston is the big thing. Houston, Houston, Houston. Because everybody knows that LeBron James is not going to stay a Cleveland Cavalier after the next year. It's just not going to happen. And even if you trade Kyrie for Carmelo, that doesn't make them better than the um, Golden State Warriors. Now, if you can get Melo, keep Love, keep Kyrie, and keep LeBron, now they can beat the Warriors. Other than that, they can't beat the Warriors. So that's why they're at where they're at. It is what it is. Anyway, that's, what I, that's all I got for you today. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. It's always a pleasure to have you guys step by. Um, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe on the video. Always remember to comment, man. Look. 
Y'all comments help me decide what videos I'm going to make. Whenever you see me not making a lot of videos, it's usually because there's just not a lot happening that's interesting to me. So I don't know which videos y'all guys want me to make. So if y'all comment on the videos and if y'all like the videos, I know that those particular videos and obviously view the videos. I know that those particular um, ideas or those particular subjects is the subjects that y'all want me to make more videos about. And I'm going to make more videos about those subjects because... To be perfectly honest with you, it's it's, it's kind of time consuming to make videos that people are in kind of foolish. To make videos about pe what people just are not interested in. So, when you comment, I know you're interested in that, that subject. When you like, I know you're interested, even more interested when you like and comment a subject. And when you view a video, especially when the video get, multiple, get a lot of views, and I'm thinking maybe people are viewing it more than once, that makes me want to make more videos about those. And um, just so everybody know, I'm going to not stop doing the gossip thing, but I'm trying to move a little bit further away from the gossip stuff. I have uh, the new series that I've just started up. I think I got two videos up now on it called American Killers. I'm also going to have uh, a games one coming out where I'm just going to uh, show a little bit of documentation of some of the American gangs, but I'm gonna, it's not going to be called American gangs, obviously, because I can't just re, keep redoing the same damn names. That don't work. But um, I got the American Killer series. That I that will be a weekly series, by the way. It will be a weekly series. And I'm going to also have a gang series coming out that is going to also be a weekly series. And then I'm going to see how those work out. And depending on how those work out is depending on what other programs I'm going to also develop. Also, this... Friday, I believe, which would be the 28th, I plan on being outside of Madison Square Garden, and I plan on doing uh, interviews on what people think about the New York Knicks. So I plan on being outside of Madison Square Garden, near the main entrance, entrance, and I plan on just giving out interviews on what people think about the New York Knicks. So if anybody want to get on, or anybody will have any opinions, or they want to see for themselves, and you want to, you know, I guess, you know, you could just stop by, and I'd be more than happy to interview you there and let you drop some of your opinions on everything. So, like I said, like, comment, subscribe, join the notification gang, hashtag Bronx Bombers, share, share, share. That's all I got on this one. I'm out.